Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again to Indaba Africa. This is Chris coming to you from central Pennsylvania. And this topic is yet another bankruptcy case in South Africa. This is about Edcon, the large retailing giant known across Southern Africa for its brands and what has been going on at Edcon. Well, on Monday, the fashion giant announced that uh, creditors had approved, 75% of creditors had approved its business rescue plan that was created by uh, Piers Morrison and Lance Shapiro to bring Edcon out of bankruptcy, which it entered back in April. The 75% of creditors represent at least 50% of the credit owed by Edcon. So this paves the way for administrators to finalize a sale process in which the company will likely be broken up by June so that it will allow for supplier renegotiation to fill stores in time for summer stock to be purchased. Now, in the midst of this on Monday, there was an application brought by a group of Edcon creditors to stop the proposed restructuring plan as not admissible. This was rejected as not admissible by, by the administrators. Now, these uh, creditors were Kingsgate and Clamatis, who were owed roughly about 40 million rands between the two of them, a little over 40 million rand. And so this was dismissed by administrators as not admissible. So the um, plan is approved, and Ed Kahn's bankruptcy restructuring will take place. Now, this is small comfort for the 22,000 workers at Ed Kahn businesses that have already been retrenched, made redundant, and sent home packing and no longer have jobs. This leaves EdCon at the moment with 17,292 permanent employees and about 5,000 seasonal workers. But EdCon is not really a casualty of COVID-19, which many people surmise. It's not the case at all. In fact, this company has been in trouble for several years. At least the last three years, they've been in serious jeopardy. And honestly, COVID-19 was simply the nail that allowed the coffin to be closed. So Edcon has been in business since his first store, Edgar's store, opened in Johannesburg back in 1929, and uh, it has several different brands. Two divisions, the department stores division and the discount division. Now, the department stores division, which serves middle and upper income markets, includes Edgar's, which operates in Botswana, Namibia, Swaziland, South Africa, and Zambia, and is the best known brand. CNA, or Consolidated News Agents, which operates in South Africa, Botswana, and Namibia. Boardman's, which is no longer in business because it closed in 2018, but it was in business in Botswana, South Africa, and Namibia. And Prado, which operated in South Africa and is also closed. Red Square and Temptations, yet another closed brand. So it really just leaves open the operating units of Edgar's CNA um, in South Africa and neighboring countries. In the discount division, this includes the, uh, the stores that serve the lower end of the uh, retail sector, and that includes Jet, which is in Botswana, Lesotho, Namibia, South Africa, Swaziland, and Zambia, Jet Mart, Jet Shoes, and Black Snow, which is also closed. Now, Jet, my recollections of Jet, every time I walked by a Jet, it always smelled like a tire factory because of the rubber that was in the shoes. <laughs> At least that's my recollections. But the restructuring of Edcon does leave one very large question here. Uh, the business rescue practitioners did not specify how the company would be reorganized and how it would be sold or broken up. One can surmise or expect that Edgar's would be sold off as a division, and it's likely that Jet would be sold off as a division because both of those have been profitable in the past, not too distant future, or not too distant past. However, that leaves a big question mark about CNA, Consolidated News Agents. Now, CNA was founded in 1896 to sell newspapers in Johannesburg by using delivery boys who were on foot and bicycle. But by 1904, the company had stores across South Africa, and it continued to expand to meet demand for news throughout uh, the First World War. And the company was eventually floated as a private uh, equity company on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, and where it raised 120,000 pounds, which in 2017 would have been 129 million pounds, quite a difference there. So it was quite a big uh, valuation when it went public. But by 1928, the company was publishing most of South Africa's newspapers, and by 95, as we jump forward, they had 350 stores located across South Africa and also in Botswana and Namibia. But the company was acquired by Wool True in 1995 for about 500 million rand. But a very difficult retail market for stationery, which the store is well known for and for books uh, in the mid to late 1990s, plus some internal problems the company led to its restructuring and it downsized to just 130 outlets uh, before it was sold to Edcon in 2002 for 130 million rand, quite a drop from what it was um, bought just about a decade prior, about seven years prior by Wool True. 
So uh, the remaining stores that are in CNA are well known throughout the region, and it's a place where millions of school children have gotten their pencils, their folios, their biros. That's a ballpoint pen for Americans. <laughs> uh, rubbers. No, it's it's not a condom, but rubbers are erasers for those not from Commonwealth countries as well as paper and other school products. Uh, it's also a spot where adults could swing in to get a local newspaper or magazine and, and also buy a few little um, odds and ends for the office. So CNA has been a reliable supplier for millions and millions of folks in Southern Africa. What will happen to CNA? I think it's a fair question. What comes out of this? The two main bookstores or the three largest bookstores in South Africa tend to be exclusive CNA and then of course come. But Come is only a business uh, that's catering to Afrikaans-speaking South Africans, so it's a smaller market, whereas CNA and Exclusive sell uh, primarily English language books, magazines, and newspapers, but they also carry other languages. So CNA and its future remain in doubt. There's a cloud hanging over it. We're likely to see when this plan is published fully that uh, both Edgar's and Jet will survive in some form or another, perhaps owned by different entities. We shall see. Ladies and gentlemen, that's just been a little bit of news, an update on the situation with the business rescue plan for EdCon, which has been approved as of yesterday, the 22nd of June, 2020, with 75% of creditors approving of the plan, uh, representing at least 50% of the interest in debt held by creditors. So this will go forward and we'll see what comes of EdCon in the future and its remaining roughly 23,000 employees there in the group. If you've enjoyed this video or you found it the least bit thought provoking, I ask you to feel free to subscribe to my channel by smashing that subscription button right down there. And be sure to toggle that bell icon to get all notifications so that you're notified of my prepared videos, my stray voltage live streams, and my regularly scheduled Saturday interview where I interview somebody from around the continent or around the world on issues of geostrategic importance for Africa and for the world. You're welcome to leave comments. I try to read all comments. And finally, I ask that you smash that like button right down there because that drives viewership of the video. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time.